Hello, 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 hello. Good evening. My name is Christian Martir on behalf of Museo del Barrio. Uh, thank you for joining us for Ponte Ready. Tonight we have a special Ponte Ready. Um, joining us is uh, a good friend and, and uh, somebody who I feel is a great contributor to the culture of New York City and beyond. Uh, quick intro. Her name is Santana Benitez, better known as Chef Santana Benitez. She's a Food Network Chop Champion who received a culinary and culinary management diploma from the Institute of Culinary Education in New York City and a member of uh, SAG. After interning with Tasting Table Test Kitchen and working in different restaurants, Santana did decided to branch out on her own as a freelance chef and culinary instructor under I'll Cook Like Your Mother. I'll Cook Like Your Mother provides a full range of freelance chef services, including pop-ups, dining events, private cooking lessons, catering, food-centric event production, recipe development, etc. Santana currently lives in Puerto Rico, uh, although she's not joining Puerto Rico tonight, uh, where she cooks and creates content for her web series, I'll Cook Like Your Mother. She also runs La Clinica de Comida, a free community food and acupuncture alternative healing program that was directly inspired by the Black Panthers. Santana can also be seen playing Ludres, Lulu Blackman in both, episodes, both seasons of Spike Lee's directed series, She's Gotta Have It, which is currently on Netflix. Santana, how are you? You're muted. You're muted, yeah. Oh, here we go. Now we hear you. Here we go. How are hey you? Hey, guys, what, what is that? What is the, it's always like a 50-50 chance of not being muted. Yeah, I'm always muted. muted. <laughs> What's going on? How are you? Good, good. How about yourself? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the intro. Of course, of course, um, of course. So, so I guess I'll just, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, I think the way we sort of promote this promo is, is, is this is sort of brief, for the bring people to Pinones. So I know you're very familiar with that area. Do you want to talk a little bit about Pinones before you get started? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did talk about that because mm -hmm. first of all, the menu for tonight, I wanted to keep it very simple, a cute, easy, very approachable holiday menu. So first things first, everybody is doing coquito. It is coquito season. Season. And I actually was talking with friends online about how Coquito has really blown up in the last three years and it seems like it's peaking in 2020. So um, everyone has their own way of doing it. Moms, grandmas, cousins, everybody sells it, everybody wants it. So I wanted to share my recipe with you all. I do vegan versions. I don't do eggs ever. I don't do regular condensed milk. I don't do evaporated milks. I don't do any dairy at all in my Coquito. So I want to share that with you. I also want to share tips for if you can't access condensed coconut milk, how to make your own. And then also for the snack, I wanted to, to make a simple vaso de camarón or vaso de mariscos. Basically, it's a room temperature or cool seafood salad that goes with um, hot and crispy tostones. So I'm also going to show you, I think, the most fail-proof, easiest, best way to make tostones. And that way, you put those two together. You have some coquito, it's very holiday centric. So it's just you and your quarantine pod. It's just enough for, you know, two people. This is no more than three people amounts. So, <laughs> but no, I'm just teasing. So, yeah, so. Is right outside of um, San Juan. I actually live in San Juan. I've been here in the States for the last three months and I'm going back at the end of the month, maybe 15 minutes and strip of bars and restaurants, beautiful beach, you know, it's where families go to hang out. There's seafood, there's fritura. It's like the land of fritura and, and pina coladas and all kinds of nice stuff. But the vaso de camarón or mariscos is very popular. You'll get that maybe with some arepas or, or tostones. So I think it's classic and it's very easy and very approachable. So that's what we're going to do today, tonight. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. Okay, cool. And if, so, oh, just quick, if, if there is any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I'll be sure to relate them to Santana. Oh, yeah, yeah. While I'm cooking, I'll just be talking. If you have any questions about technique or ingredients or anything, I'm, I'm totally down to answer. So take advantage of this hour. <laughs> All right. So actually, let me tie my hair up because, you know, duh. Um, wash my hands. So I think... The most important thing that people at home, a lot of people who aren't cooks 
um, need help with is time management. So I want to set up this meal in the way that, you know, makes sense for cooking. So we're going to start with the, the salad, the ensalada de camarón, because you want the flavors to kind of sit and, and you want all the good herbs and the, the, the aromatics to get into the shrimp. So I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to run down a list of the ingredients that I'm using tonight. I'm going to show you everything up close. So let me act like I know how to operate this and uh, Uh, all right, well, let's see. I don't, can you hear me, Christian? Am I coming in good? Everything's good, yep. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There we go. My screen was acting funny. All right, so this right here, this is the shrimp, and it is peeled de vein, ya cocido. Like, it's, you can steam it. You can even buy these bags of seafood frozen, but they're already cooked, or you can do it yourself. So, you would just take shrimp and clean it and um, steam it and cool it down. I have fresh tomatoes here. These are diced. I took all the seeds out. Just This is about two tomatoes. I have two limes here, fresh limes. I shave um, or slice red onion really thin. Some people like to do these in, in little cubes, but I'm more, in terms of presentation, I like the long and thin. I think it's beautiful. One tip for, for onions, if you're gonna be using them raw, if you don't like too much of a raw taste, is you can soak them in water for a little bit before starting to cook. And that takes some of that, like all those oils off of the onion. Uh, raw garlic, this is about two cloves. I usually go all on garlic, but since we're eating it raw, I'm gonna stick to two. I have two different types of bell peppers, red and green. If you have access to ají dulce, you can definitely use that too. And I like aguacate. I think it looks pretty and it adds creaminess to the end when you have fried tostones. Um, olives here and they're stuffed. And any, honestly, just a typical olive. This is what we use in most Puerto Rican cooking. Um, gonna keep it real simple and really fresh. Olive oil, vinegar, salt, and cracked black pepper. And that's all it's gonna take to make the, the raso de camarón. Moving over for the tostones, I've already got a pot of oil here. It's maybe about an inch up of high smoke point oil. So anything that you can do deep frying, this is a vegetable oil you can use. If you want to get bougie, you can do grapeseed oil. That's a little more expensive, but they say it's healthier. Um, but in terms of cooking, I don't cook with vegetable oil too much, just for frying. And of course, platano here, not to be confused with guineo, green banana. This is platano. I also have garlic powder because I'm gonna show you how I season up and get them garlicky for the second fry. All right. And uh, moving over to Coquito, they're all in the corner, but I'll show you, I have a good light. I'm starting with Donku. This is the rum that I drink back home and luckily it's available here in New York. Donku Cristal, it's, you know, it's usually on the lower shelves out here, but that's what we drink back home. So it's perfect. Um, evaporated coconut milk. This is what's gonna make it vegan. Many people are using condensed milk um, and, and that's fine, but if you wanna go easy on the belly, we're gonna do coconut. I also made my own coconut condensed milk. And I'm gonna talk you through that. It's a very quick process because I want you to be able to do the same. I'm keeping that in the fridge because we want the coquito nice and cold. Also, we've got some coffee because we're gonna do a coffee version. You can brew it very strong. You can make your favorite coffee. It doesn't really matter. Um, you don't have to put the coffee in. Oh, there's pizza. Shout out to New York pizza. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so we have regular coconut milk, evaporated coconut milk, condensed homemade in the fridge. Basic spices, you're gonna need ground cinnamon. Cinnamon is also important. I use stick cinnamon that I also put into the bottle or any, any jar that I'm gonna put the coquito in. Some ground clove, because I like a little kick. Definitely gotta have nutmeg. And you can even use allspice, but I don't necessarily use it sometimes. And pure vanilla extract. And that is all you need for a really good coquito. But let me, let's get started. Let's get back to the kitchen. All right, so I wanna, I'm gonna set this down because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing right here. All right, so this is gonna come together really quickly. Like I said, I wanted to get this started first because I want the flavors to be able to settle. Take my ring off. All right, so first things first, the shrimp has not been seasoned yet. You gotta season everything. I don't wanna go OD on the salt just because I have 
Um, olives are gonna be going in there and I don't, you know, olives make things salty. Can you guys see this okay? Let me know if there's any, uh, if you have any trouble seeing what I'm working on. All right, so I have the, the shrimp here. All right. And I'm just gonna season it with salt. Ay, 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 of course, a live cooking show. The whole lid comes off. But you know, the good thing is they're whole crystals. So they're not seasoning the thing just yet. So my luck, I'm gonna take this shrimp out of this bowl and transfer it over. <laughs> Make sure your, uh, your salt top is completely screwed on. That would be very helpful. All right, so. All right. Okay. Well, they're salted. <laughs> All right. So I have the garlic, minced garlic. You can even crush this in your pilon just to get like a nice garlic paste. So you don't have garlic chunks in there. If you're gonna if you're gonna crush it in your pilon, then put a raw clove and some salt, and that makes it it breaks it down easier. So you're not fighting with this clove all in your pilon. All right, I'm just gonna put just a little bit of garlic to my liking. You do it to yours. There's not an exact amount here. Pepper, same thing with the peppers. If you're not big on raw bell pepper or whatever, you can even leave this out. But these are the most standard ingredients. I'm doing red and green because it looks pretty. And like I said, ahi dulce is, is pretty common to use too. All right. These olives, I, I love olives, man. I try not to go do too much because I don't think everyone loves them as much as I do, but it is what it is. If you need to mince them up to make them more bite-sized, that's fine. I have some baby olives here, so it works out for me. Fresh tomato, nice little scoop. The, the tomato's gonna, gonna um, give it some nice freshness, which I love. So don't use canned, use fresh tomatoes. Lots of black pepper. Little splash of vinegar. This depends on how acidic you like it. Some people like more vinegar than others, but you know, vinegar and, and olive oil are like quintessential Boricua seasoning, real simple. Like that's it. That's all you need for flavors, garlic, olive oil, and vinegar. Um, if you wanna make a nice dressing, you can go heavy on the olive oil. That's why it's good to get a good brand. Um, notice I'm not using any Goya products. You don't have to stick with Goya for the holidays or any other time. Um, there are really good products out here um, for this kind of stuff. All right, so that's everything except for the lime juice. And you know, when it's time to cook, it's nice to have everything chopped up. I have this tattoo here that says mise en place. And for those of you who don't know, it's a culinary expression and it basically means like everything in its place, you know? So everything is cut and ready to go. So when it's time to cook, you can just, you know, flow through. All right. And I like mine pretty tangy. So I'm gonna put like a lime and a half. If you don't have limes, you have lemon. These are one of those things where like, that's fine, you can substitute it. Now, typically I put cilantro in here too, but I forgot it like a boba at the store. So I don't have cilantro, but this is looking bomb and bright and really fresh. And it's, I know it's summery, it's a summery dish, which I think is nice because you can trick your mind into thinking you're in like this really, you're in piñones, you're in a fresh summery vibe. Put the music on, trick your brain. Oh yeah, this looks really good. And you see at the bottom here in the base, there's like a nice olive oil. What kind of olive oils I recommend? Um, there's so many different olive oils out there. I usually tend to be bougie and get, you know, the Spanish olive oil. Um, cause I feel like they usually have some good brands, you know, this, the imported ones from Spain usually have pretty good olive oil. Um, just also one thing to notice when you, when you buy oils, a lot of times they're blended. Um, they'll say like sunflower oil and half of it will be, you know, vegetable oil. So pay attention to that when you're buying oils too. That's really important. All right, so the most important thing when you're cooking is to taste. So many people cook and just, they don't taste their food. Like it. Mm. Tastes bomb. Really good. I'm gonna put a little more lime in here though, cause I like it real limey. And maybe a little more garlic. Um, let's see. 
And it's one of those things you can whip up really quickly. Um, like I said, you can do this with pulpo. I love pulpo, but I don't eat it, unfortunately, but it's delicious. Um, <laughs> shrimp. Um, Garrucho is really common on the island too, which is conch. So it's like a mix of three you'll find. So this is about where I want it. I'm gonna put a little more salt. Believe it or not, I don't have enough salt on it. <laughs> I was able to save it in the, in the first round. All right, so this is good. Like this is where I want it to be. I might put a little bit more olive oil cause I like mine oily. I like to be able to dip the tostones in that like garlicky oil. All right, so I'm gonna put this to the side. I'm not gonna pop this in the fridge. We're gonna be eating it soon. Um, I'm gonna put it over, get it out the way, okay? So I'm gonna reset my space and we'll get started on the coquito. And that way the flavors can kind of sit and um, infuse the liquor, all that can infuse together while we make the tostones, which is also quite a quick process. I think these are, you know, some of the classics, people get intimidated by the classics, but they, they usually are the easiest things to make. Um, so that's the thing with tostones, it's some people, some people, do this, the second fry. Let me tell you why. I actually get um, a pot of, or like a bowl of cold ice water. Or what you can do right now, or like at this point, you can fill a bowl of water, put it in the in the freezer while you're cooking, just to get it nice and cold. It doesn't have to have actual ice cubes in it. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I just got a regular bowl with some delicious New York tap water <laughs> and the garlic powder. So I'm heavy, heavy handed on the garlic powder because this is the place where the tostones go to soak before you fry them again. So go heavy on it. You really want them to have that flavor without having to do a lot of work. So this is smelling crazy garlicky. And you also put some salt in here, salt it, and also taste it. It should taste like, I like mine to taste as salty as the ocean. That's always my marker. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands and put this in the freezer. All right, so I'm resetting the space. I think that's really important when you're cooking to clear your space out. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with cooking because they're like the dishes, the mess, the before, the after. So take your time to really set yourself up. So when you move on to the next thing, it's like a joy, it doesn't feel stressful. That's important. Cooking is really fun. It can, be, it can be a fun challenge. All right, so the coquito is gonna come together really quickly. Like I said, everyone does it their own way. And I'm not trying to shade anyone that, that does, you know, all the condensed milks and evaporated milks because that's how most of us learn. That's kind of how it started out. But you notice how it doesn't feel good on your belly. You know, you gassy, you just, you don't feel good. So there are other methods to having a creamy coquito that has body to it and doesn't make you feel like you ate a brick of cheese. So, and if that's not an issue for you, well, then you're lucky, but. I think most of us at this point in our lives can't really handle too much dairy. <laughs> so, and Puerto Rican food really isn't big on dairy. You know, most Caribbean food doesn't really have a lot of dairy in it. So our people naturally are kind of resistant to it, which is totally fine. All right, so my space is cleared. Uh, I wanna talk to you about the homemade condensed coconut milk. I'm gonna grab it. So, Honestly, truly, I took regular coconut milk and I put it into just a regular pot, a regular sauce pot. Um, nonstick is cool, but I, I don't really own a lot of nonstick, but if you have one that works. Um, and I took two cans of this coconut milk, Caribbean 
Jamaican coconut milk and you put that in the pot with, if you wanna add vanilla, you can add vanilla. This is the point where you can infuse the milk if you like, but I kept it really plain. A nice idea would be like maybe um, some lavender buds, maybe some rose buds. If you wanted to make a floral, you know, homemade condensed milk, coconut milk, and then you add your sugar. You add um, brown sugar, sugar in the raw. If you have honey, that would be lovely. Agave, if you really wanna keep it vegan. Um, and then you reduce it, stir it, taste it, make sure it's sweet. You want it, that's gonna be the sweetener in the coquito. That's gonna balance out the really strong like rum flavor. And so you can reduce it and reduce it means just keep it simmering on low and a lot of the moisture will evaporate and it'll get thicker and condensed and it'll be sweet. And it's coconut milk and it's, it's not gonna give you that like, again, that gassy feeling. I could have taken this condensed milk even further. You can even make it like dulce de leche consistency like very, very thick, low and slow all day long. So it's up to you. It would That would be the good time to get, um, like I said, creative with infusions. Um, if you like almond extract, you could put almond instead of vanilla extract into this point while you're reducing the milk. That would be delicious. Just get creative. If, if you wanna make it spicy, whatever you're trying to do, this, that would be the point to do it. So, all right, blender. About how long does it take to reduce? Um, I would say this, I only reduced that one for like 35 minutes. I think a really good reduction on low for like almost two hours, even less would be really nice, but that would be at a very low point and you're scraping it and you're stirring and you're making sure that nothing's getting stuck on the sides at the bottom. But even less, you'll know when it's thick and it has like a, almost like a caramel consistency. That is very desirable. So, I mean, we ain't going nowhere, we're not supposed to. So if you have all day, just you might as well put some coconut milk and you can do a ton, like a bunch of cans at once. So that way you have it through the season. This would be really nice gifts to give to people. If you can buy it, put them in jars and let them, hey, I made this for you, like your vegan friends. Cause you know, we tease them, but you know, we gotta give our vegan friends some love too. All right, so, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna start with the rum amount. All really depend on you. If you like a strong coquito, like really strong, I consider a strong coquito in, not in balance. I think that this drink is meant to be strong because it's really meant for sipping. You don't really pour your gas, your, your glass up full with coquito. So um, I like to make it to where I feel like if I take a little sips of it, then I'm, I wanna be able to feel it. But I also don't wanna just taste straight up liquor. That's, that's not attractive and then that's not what we're here for. So let me grab a cup and we'll start getting it in the blender. Okay, so we can start with about, like I said, donku, this is, if you see this in your liquor store, get it. This is what we drink on the island for real, for real. You know, you get a really good cocktail for $5 of fresh juice and it has donku, typically. So, and it's cheaper than Bacardi. All right. This is probably like a cup and a half that I'm starting with in the blender. I'm going to put a whole can of the evaporated coconut milk. All right, there you go. And if you can't find this, you can just do the, the condensed that I'm talking about, one or the other, because the condensed is going to give it the body and the sweetness that we need. So if you can't find it, just make it. And that's, that's what you'll use. All right. I'm going to get kind of liberal with this. And remember, coquito almost is never a one-shot deal. It's always adjusting and flavoring, tasting, especially if you're making a big batch. What I recommend is if you don't have a big blender, this one's not so big. If you're making a bunch at once, like a really big batch of this, get yourself a big bowl, pour all the ingredients together in the bowl, then blend it in batches because you want everything thoroughly incorporated. You don't want to have like one batch that's perfect and the other one is missing the ingredients. Like get your big bowl, incorporate that and then, then blend it up. All right. So I'm going to put a little bit of regular coconut milk just for good measure. And again, I don't measure the spices. It's just one of those instinctive things where if you see you want a lot of cinnamon, I'm kind of heavy on the cinnamon. So this is probably two teaspoons right now. 
we can always add more. Remember, you can always add more, but you can't take away. So poco a poco is always the best tip when it comes to cooking, mixing, anything. All right, nutmeg. I like mine a little on the spicier, peppier, pepperier side. So I go a little heavier, maybe a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. This is a shame, y'all. I'm drinking a cocktail while I'm making a cocktail. <laughs> mm. It is what it is. All right. And I'm also heavy on the vanilla. Um, again, this would be a unique moment to try different extracts that you like. Again, it wouldn't be traditional, but almond would be really nice here. If you have people that are into almond extract, that could be really nice. And um, a little bit of coffee. I'm not gonna use all this. I'm just gonna test it out. And then we're gonna blend and we're gonna gauge it. We're gonna taste it. And then we'll know what needs to be added and what needs to be subtracted. If, if it's too strong, you can always pour some of it out and then add more of the sweet ingredients. And I don't mean waste it, but pour it and save it for something else or maybe another batch. Cause you'll be like, dang, I threw everything in here. It's so strong. What do I do next? Take about half of that batch out and work with half of it and get it, build it back up where you need it to be. All right. This is not my blender, so wish me luck. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can totally add it to your coffee. I have another really cute trick for that. So another really cute trick, and I can't say I came up with this idea, Pinterest told me, but um, you can take a ice cube tray and brew some very, very strong coffee. And just like you put your sofrito in the cubes, put your coffee in those cubes. And then when it's time to enjoy your coquito, you can serve those cubes in the glass. It would be really cute. And you, you show it to a friend and people don't usually do that. So that's a nice little touch, I think. I'm gonna try it out right now. Um, if you don't have a good blender, you can do the old school way, whip it, whisk it with the whisk, but just like really incorporate it. It can be done, but you gotta put some elbow grease in. All right. Look how fast this is coming together. Let me get a spoon. I want to taste this. Ooh, and I'm going to show you the body on this. It, there's weight to it, even though it's vegan. It's pretty perfect. <laughs> it's pretty perfect. I mean, I've been making so much. Look at that. It looks like a milkshake. Like it's got weight. It's not watery, it's thoroughly blended. It's got that light coffee flavor. You could even go stronger on the coffee. Um, but I think that this is, this is where I want it to be. This is really nice. So let me set up. If you're not gonna serve it in shot glasses, let me put this down. Are there any questions, Christian, that I can answer while I'm transitioning over to the story? I had a question about the coffee. Like, so it looked like you have, it was like with milk in it already. Can you tell me how you're yeah. not putting straight black coffee? No, no, I'm not. But this is all mm. about personal preference. Mm. So I had some already brewed up and already blended. Okay. So it's like, instead of wasting, just add that through. Now, if you want to just do straight coffee to make this, like I said, to make this purely, purely for the vegans, this one has a little bit of crema in there, okay. but it doesn't have to. That's just my coffee preference. It's like a little right. cafe con leche on top right. of it. Um, yeah, I recommend really strong brewed coffee, especially if this is going to be like a thick, sweet drink. You know, because it can it can cut through. Right. I saw some other questions coming through, but I wasn't able to catch them all. There was questions about like sofrito, like can you use sofrito to make the like the shrimp? Um, or oh yeah, the, yeah. So the way you would do that, here, the way you would incorporate that is you, if you would prefer to have um, cooked aromatics, or you have to cook the sofrito. Sofrito raw is just like way too intense. That's it's mm -hmm. almost never an option so what you could do is you could fry a little bit of it for maybe 30 seconds in some good olive oil let that mm -hmm. olive oil cool completely cool and then incorporate that in the olive oil dressing with the vinegar and that all those flavors would really infuse um honestly m everything in that salad with the exception of ají dulce and racao mm -hmm. Those are also frito ingredients and the cilantro, of course, which I left off, but right. normally I would not. It's still delicious without it, but it really does benefit from like a nice bright herb. You know, we love our cilantro. So yes. 
those ingredients are sofrito ingredients with all of our guisado you know it's like we put sofrito mm -hmm. in and then we put sofrito ingredients in it's the funniest thing <laughs> that we do <laughs> it's just like so funny that we cook up but that's Double how up. honestly that's how puerto rican flavor builds that's why you eat our beans and it took no time but it's like putting flavor on top of flavor real quickly so it's pretty genius actually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right I'm going to set up the coquito glass. Very simple, but you know, when you're serving it, if you're going to be at home, you can't be at a bar, you know, it's quarantine time. You want to make it special. So remember the trick with the coffee cubes would be cute as heck. You could put them in now, like three of them, and then pour just a little bit of coquito over. over. Traditionally, we let this sit at least overnight with cinnamon sticks inside, but I'm going to have some now and we can enjoy the rest later. So when I serve it, I usually don't serve any more than that. Like it's usually like, like right up to here, like treat it like you would like scotch or brandy or something. And of course you gotta have a little cinnamon on top. And it's nice, it's, it's, I also like it in red wine glasses. It's something in a nice goblet. I think it looks really festive and holiday and it looks good. So, salut. Salut, salut. That is how you make, and you see the body on this, like you see, it's not a watery, it like holds on to the glass. It is a, it is a legit vegan coquito. So I'm just gonna take a little see it real quick. Mm -hmm. Y'all, this yeah. is so good. This is, <laughs> but I know I'm my gonna, pour up. Mm. No, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna lie. I, I tend to be egotistically say I make the best coquito in the world, but that, that does look like, you might beat me Santana. I don't know if I've ever had yours, but this one looks, this one looks official. So. I don't know what I did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. you, might have, you might have to try this one out and then get back I'm to have me. To. I'm definitely. Okay. So I'm going to do another quick reset. Let's get on the tostones. It's going to be a very quick, simple process. Am I moving too fast for people? Sometimes I have a tendency to do that. So is, the, is, is my pacing okay? Is that good? I feel the pace is good. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And you know what's so nice because when I'm doing these zooms in Puerto Rico, it's always like a lag. There's always some sort of like, eh, 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 did you get me? I'm breaking up. Always, always. All right, let me just let me just reset my space. Like I said that's really important. I'm gonna ask you another question about coquito real quick. Like I know yes. you use like basically like white rum. Uh, some people use a dark yeah. rum. Some people use spice rum. It's to taste, yeah. right? However you feel, right? Yeah, you can use coconut rum. I mm -hmm. used, the other day I used Crujan, shout out to mm -hmm. St. Croix. <laughs> mm -hmm. I used Crujan <laughs> um, coconut rum. So, and mm -hmm. it was just like another level of, of yeah. coconut. So it works. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just like the classic Dunku. The classic, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can definitely, if you have spice rum, you can do that. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, mm -hmm. My rules are, my hard, hardest rule of ever is no eggs. No eggs. If you want to do condensed anything that's that's milk, that's fine. I probably will pass. But the egg mm -hmm. is a hard, hard no. Anything else you can tweak the the yes. extracts for the flavoring. It's all you. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna get going on the platano. Let me set this up so you guys can see what I'm doing, and you can, I want you to really see how to cut these and get them prepared. Now, if you remember, I already got the bowl of water with salt and plenty of garlic powder. It's in the freezer just because I want to get it cold quickly. And the reason that we fry or we, we, we cool them down in, in um, cold water and fry them again, is because just like with almost like a French fry, which is, this is our Puerto Rican French fry, just like with a French fry, you don't just fry them one good time. You fry them, you blanch them, so to speak, and then you cool them down and then you fry them again. And that gives it a really fluffy texture with a crunchy exterior. Mm -hmm. So the inside is fluffy and, and puffy and ready to go. It's fully cooked and it's light. And the outside is, you'll notice it gets really like as gr gritty crunch that you want. And I think that the, the second fry and the soaking in between is, is really crucial. Mm -hmm. Now, my friend, she doesn't have a tostonera at her house and you don't need one. Anything with a flat bottom. So... And I actually like when this happens because then I can show you how you can do do it without equipment. So this is just fine. This is going to be perfect to smash. Exactly. Grab a plate. Busabe. You know the little tricks. Mm -hmm. You can use a cup too. A, a, a flat bottom cup is fine. Whatever works. Um, all right. And also, anytime you're frying, 
before you even get the oil hot, get yourself a plate lined with paper towels. You need a place for that hot fried food to come off of and absorb the oil. You don't want to be running around your kitchen, you know, looking for something. So I like to get that set up. The oil's going to heat up fast. I'm not turning it on just yet. But, all right. So I have my paper plate lines and ready to go. I already have my oil in the pot. Now, technically it's a deep fry, but I don't put a lot, a lot of oil, just enough for about an inch size, an inch piece of the platano to, to be able to be submerged in. And I'll show you what the process looks like. I'm gonna put this down here. All right, sorry, I'm moving around so much. All right, here we go. So first things first, I think a lot of people are like stressed out by how to cut and peel a platano, but it's crazy easy. The platano comes with its own little rivets and it shows you where to cut. So I'll show you how to do that right now. Look at this off the board. I'm gonna fry like two of them just because it's two of us and one platano each. I love these. <laughs> They're so cute. Okay. <laughs> I love fruit art. Such a food nerd. Okay, so where is my knife? Where is my knife? This knife. I'm gonna turn the oil on because I move quick and by the time these are peeled, it'll be hot. So start it as any, you know, about medium high. And ideally, the minimum you want your oil when you're frying anything to be is 350, but I like to go to like 360. I don't really measure it either. I'll just drop like little flour, a little, I'll even put a little piece of what I'm gonna fry in there. And if it doesn't react, if it doesn't bubble up, it's not hot enough. If it bubbles up, then you're good to go. All right, so you notice that these lines on the platano, I feel like I'm, this is, if this is elementary for some of you guys, I'm sorry, but I just want to run this down for people who are trying to get comfortable with, you know, our classic food. And also I think there's shame around that too. People who don't know how to cook it, they're like, they go their whole lives not knowing how to cook it because they're embarrassed to learn and tell people they don't know. And that's crazy. All right, so these rivets I use to just slice down and crack open the skin. I let that guide, but what I do is I start, I cut off the top and the bottom, and then I take my knife, my, my big ass OD knife, and then I just slice down the rivets, right? Like I'm going down these lines from top to bottom. I'm so tired of peeling and cutting viandas and all this stuff, because you know, it's pastel season two. Mm -hmm. And Christian was like, if you want to do a pastelas recipe, it, like uh, pump spray, <laughs> you, know, you have two whole days alive. <laughs> he was getting way too excited, but I get it. So now that I've done that, it cracks off pretty easy. You just find a spot where you ran your knife along and crack, peel it off. Some of them, if they're old and crotchety, they'll they'll give you a hard time, but um, they usually just crack off easy. And when you're doing a million of them, it gets really played. But when you do like your first three and you, for the first time, you feel proud of yourself. Cause like, oh damn, <laughs> that's easy. All right. So I, just for time's sake, I'm just gonna show you guys one, but you can, once you've done one, you can do a million of them just like this. If there's any stubborn pieces, you can just shave it off. Try not to lose so much meat though. All right. so. And also when I'm cooking, I usually keep a trash bowl, like a big bowl around so I can just throw scraps in. I hate a messy board. I hate trying to find space to cook. Like when I'm done with it, it needs to get, to get off my board. All right, so I'm gonna bring this down to eye level. There we go. So I would say I usually cut them about this big. So about two, two fingers widths wide. Some people cut them at a diagonal, I don't. It's fine. This is a good, a good size. This is on the bigger side, but it works. Mm. This is on the smaller side, but it works, all right? So my oil is getting hot. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what I mean. Like you'll start to see if you're not, you'll, when you see the line starting to spread, that's you know it's getting close, but it's not quite there. Um, let me see. I'm gonna just show you what I mean by testing it out. 
So it didn't really give me a good rumble. There's like, it's something's happening, but it's kind of quiet. I want to hear a sizzle. If you don't hear a sizzle, take it out and continue to let it fry, uh, heat. Because when you put fried foods in too early, that food, no matter what it is, is going to absorb a bunch of oil. It's going to be soggy and it's going to be whack. So don't, don't do that. All right. So, all right. So we have everything that we need, right? Um, there is... But those stories are cut. I'm gonna pull that water out of the, the freezer. And I also have my landing station. Also, when I'm not, I'm gonna turn this around. When I'm not serving these, like when I'm serving them just by themselves or even really just with anything, also bao, anything, I like to make a, like a little, like a little mojo, a little ajo sauce. And it's very, very simple. I crush and I put like a garlic clove with salt and a pilon, smash it, and I add olive oil. And that's just dipping oil, that's it. And you just dip the tostones in. But in this case, because we have a nice little ensalada de camarón, that's gonna go on top. It doesn't really need it, you know? But you can do it, you, you, it would be nice. I just, I'm gonna skip it tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna get my cold garlic salt water for the second fry, all right? And again, use a lot because you really want you really want it to taste garlicky. It almost looks like broth, but that is just all garlic powder. I think that this is where it needs to be. Yeah, I'm hearing a sizzle. Now I have it really high. This is where you start to adjust your heat. You don't want it because it's gonna cook the outside, burn it too quickly. This is where you bring fried foods down to medium high. Almost never does it stay up on high the whole time. But you got to control your heat. That's a big part of cooking. These aren't going to be in very long. These are going to be in just long enough to wear that like raw beige. Oh, I forgot her. Fire alarm does that. Um, where the raw beige color is off. Like you see how this is already turning more golden and this one looks kind of raw and beige. You don't want that raw beige color. You don't want them to brown, but you want them, you want to take the rawness off. That's key. And it's, it is a, it's, it, it's a fine line. And I know that some people, you know, when the, it's like the learning curve, when you're learning how to get it just right, but don't worry about undercooking because you're going to fry it again. Just worry about overcooking because once you do that, it'll be hard to manipulate when you want to smash it or whatever. All right. So we're just going to wait. This is what we'll take a little sip of the coquito. <laughs> get our drink on. Mm -hmm. And this Have is really nice, a... frothy. Hmm? No, I'm gonna tell Reborn, I'm gonna try, do a drive by. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll <laughs> tell her. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I, I personally I just bought an air fryer. I'm curious to try the stones in the air fryer. I don't know if you. Eh. <laughs> I encourage anyone to try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. But it's not my thing. Some things just have to thing? be done the way they are. But let you. me know. No, really. No, no, no. I, I want to know. I will. All right, so look, these are starting to get almost to the point where they could be brown, but we caught them in just enough time. Controlling your heat, controlling your heat, most important thing. So I'm gonna turn this oil off because we have to work with these tostones for a little bit and it will heat up very quickly. You just don't want your oil going, that's madness. And oil can get super toxic if you reuse it. I just wanna share that little tip with you guys. I know culturally we tend to save our oil in containers that they didn't come in. Or we leave it on a pot on the stove and we just keep refrying it the next week. That That's how you get a lot of carcinogen, car, I can't ever say the word, carcinogens in the oil. It becomes highly toxic, it becomes rancid. So what I recommend is when you're gonna fry, I like to save my bottles. I think when it gets empty, people tend to throw them away just to you know get rid of a mess. But let your oil cool down completely and then pour it back into the bottles and then throw it out. That's, don't pour it down your sink. Don't flush it down the toilet. Um, I mean, throwing away doesn't feel good, but just cool it down first and put it in a bottle. And I think that's like the best, those are the best frying practices. All right, let's finish this up. It's real quick, really nice process. It's very therapeutic too. It's like smash and dip. I like that. So you're going to take the tostón and, oh, I ended up using the plate for something else. Here we go. I'm gonna use this bowl. And 
It's always weird working in someone else's kitchen, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna smash it. Uh oh, that one was a big dude. All right, smash it. This one looks a little on the raw side. There we go. See these? They're like not fully cooked, but they have shape. All right. And if you fully cook them, then they won't be able to get to this smashing point. But you want them to be cooked enough so they have some body to them so they can hold up to that garlic salt water and they're really hot. I just have, my fingers are so used to that, so. All right. So I'm gonna finish smashing these. I'm gonna turn it around, I'm gonna show you. All right. So now that I have, I'm gonna turn the oil back on just to get it medium high because we're gonna be frying them again soon. Medium high, drop it in, drop a few at a time. Let them sit for a bit, let them soak, get that flavor in. This really is good, I'm telling you. <laughs> it is really nice, it's super light. It's really good, really, really good. All right, all right, all right, all right. So I think these have soaked long enough. It will pop, you know, maybe it makes you shake off excess water. Don't just take it from the bowl in because it's gonna pop. But you notice it's not going crazy because I shake, 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 shake. Okay. I love that sound. I love the frying. <laughs> I really do. Be careful not to overcrowd the pan. I'm gonna switch it around so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, thank you. It's like a little candle. It's tucked in. It's a full apron, but it's just too hot for all that. So, all right. So let's flip it around. And you see they're starting to, to shape up and do their thing. I don't like to crowd the pan because I don't, like I said, I don't want, I don't want, um, what will happen is instead of frying, they can steam and all that moisture, it'll throw off the frying process and they won't be as crunchy. They'll just be more like wet crunchy. I can't really explain it. It's just not the texture that you want. So don't, don't overcrowd your pan. We're gonna let those go for a little bit. Always have some salt available to sprinkle when they come out the oil. I think all fried foods for the most part really benefit from like an instant salt. I'm trying to find, oh, here we go. Here we go. Right. I'm going to turn it down. I don't want it too high. And while those are frying, I can answer some more questions if anyone has any. Were there any, any more food questions? That's what I'm looking to see if any. Hmm? I don't see any immediate ones now. Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna get these out the first batch. These can keep frying. They went, when did you start cooking? Um, I was I've been cooking forever my whole life, but like professionally, um, in 2013. I started when I started culinary school here, I was working at my Zom Premier in Williamsburg. I don't know if you guys know that. It's like a seafood steakhouse. I was working on Garden Manger there, like all their like raw seafood salads, which is funny because I'm doing a seafood salad tonight. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's when I started cooking professionally. 2013. Okay. It's been a really fast seven years. Really fast. We have a question about how do you avoid getting the tostones overly salty? Uh don't take taste your salt. Like I said, taste your water, your seasoning water. Like I in the beginning, I think I mentioned that tasting along the way is everything. Mm -hmm. um, and just you don't have to put um, too much salt when they come off the oil. Just enough to give them like a little a little zhuzh, you know. Mm -hmm. That's all. 
All right, so I'm gonna show you all what these are looking like. Sorry. So these are my little three ones right now, but these are golden and they're like perfectly soft and fluffy on the inside and crunchy. Mm. We have crunch? <laughs> mm. Yeah. And it's gonna be so good with that like garlicky, mm -hmm. oily, fresh salad or uh, shrimp salad. Yes. It's nice that this is the heaviest part of the meal. Right, you know? right, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, hmm. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Me to my own horn. <laughs> honestly, honestly, all day when it comes to cooking, I'll be in the kitchen like dancing and, you know. <laughs> oh. Someone said it's pretty hard to find coconut something. Uh, pretty hard to find coconut evaporated milk. Can you share the brand name of the can you use? Oh, this is um, Grace. Oh, Great. Jamaican okay. choice. But like I Jamaican said, choice, um, okay. if you can't find this, don't trip. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. make a double batch of the, con the the condensed coconut milk that I talked about in the beginning. Right. That's um, that's really that's really all you need. That with other coconut milk and the rum and the spices, that's gonna get right. you that like weight. Okay. So you notice my my bosones have a little weird shape, but they really look delicious. Like the, that bowl really wasn't giving me the vibes I was going for. But guess what? <laughs> They're still tostones. They That's exactly, like, yeah. <laughs> they're hot the and they're crispy and they're bomb. So <laughs> I feel like it was very successful. And also I think it's important when I do these classes for people to see that like cooking is never perfect. It's always a little wonky. Mm -hmm. It's always, especially when you do events, something always goes mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Something will go wrong. So Absolutely. the cooking part is just going with the flow and having fun and getting creative with your ingredients and really just learn if you know flavor if you know what tastes good you can always mm -hmm. freestyle i'm gonna pour a little more coquito you can always freestyle so mm -hmm. all right so it looks like we're done i'm gonna set it up take a little sip i'm gonna set up the plate and then i can answer so many last minute questions because you yeah, see how quick that came together that came together real fast <laughs> um, right? somebody asked about what's the difference between um the evaporated and condensed coconut milk if you're making it from scratch so the condensed milk gets reduced to where it's like very, very thick. It can be almost like, like I said, dulce de leche, mm -hmm. almost like um, just very thick caramel consistency. And evaporated, I think, is just slightly reduced. So it's gotten sweeter. It's they're kind of the same thing, to be honest. But mm -hmm. condensed milk has gone even further. So, yeah. All right, we got another. We have a question. Can you teach us in Spanish? The whole. Do you want to do this whole now? Can you teach the class in can Spanish? Can I teach the class? Yeah. Yeah, I think I can no. teach it. I can <laughs> teach it in Spanish, yeah. Um, like right now or? Like right now, go for you. Got, or you, you mean like teach a class? Oh yeah. Yeah, I think there's an interest I'm in having this class in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I, I do, yeah, I actually do. Um, I've done some in person, like with a small group of women in Puerto Rico. And you know, official language of Puerto Rico there is, is obviously Spanglish, but yeah, yeah, I could, I would be, and it's good for me to work on mine and challenge and get it when I'm away, you know, when you're away from the island, it's one of those things yeah. like not use it or lose it, but mm -hmm. you know, you kind of fall out of Puerto Rican Spanish and I, yes, you know, yes. I want to, yeah, I'm going back at the end of the month though. So I'm gonna jump right back into it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's and, always and, an and adjustment. People, like when I, the, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that transition is weird when you get back, you know, your ear is not prepared for that. Well, when I get back here, I always want to like speak to Spanish and people. I was going to say, when provecho in restaurants. And I'm like, they're not going to. Let that me stop. You know, I always have to you adjust to. my head. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Absolutely. So let me set, let me get us set up, get these plates going. Um, let's see, because it's, it's vaso de camarón. So let's get a nice, where are her vases at? Um, goblets, goblets, goblets. Huh, we'll use this. This is cute. It looks like a tea glass, but that's okay. We'll use it. It's adorable. Um, and that's the thing. If you're eating at home all the time and you're tired, you know, we're all eating at home, try and make, you know, make your plating cute. Like make it whimsical. <laughs> you don't have to eat out of a bowl. You can eat out of a, <laughs> a wine glass. <laughs> all right. So let me put this camera down. I'm gonna set it up and then we're gonna say good night. Or like I said, answer questions. I would if there aren't any last minute ones, I would be glad to.
All right. So first things first, I want to get some of that marinade at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I want them sitting in some of them juices. All right. And oh, I forgot the aguacate. We can put it on top. We'll put it on top. That always happens. It'd be nice to mix it in too, especially if you're doing it fresh to get that nice bright green. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. That's pretty, right? All right, here we go. And you can just stick the tostón inside. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, wanna make them even smaller, even cuter, like if you're doing a little, in the future, if you're having a party, you can do smaller versions. And these would be really good past hors d'oeuvres. Mm -hmm. How cute, right? Super cute. You miss, have you ever seen them with like it's almost like a mini mofongo? They put like a yeah. Like the cup I mean, if you is, want it, uh, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could definitely do mofongo and just fill it out with this. Mm -hmm. But I think that this is a nice little, you know, mm. the crunch. Mm -hmm. So good. <laughs> so bomb. And then of course, you know, I'm on my second glass of bolito. <laughs> so Santana, we did thank over you. Here. Uh, Quick question, if you want to find out more about you, if they want to, you know, with, uh, with all you do, um, where, where's the best place to reach you? Oh, yeah. Um, I would say I'm more of an Instagram than Twitter girl. So my first and middle name, Santana Caress, is my full, my handle. Um, right now, if you want Coquito and you're in New York, I'm selling bottles of this from the 16th through the 19th only. So holler at my dms and it's pickup only in brooklyn i don't do deliveries but it is pickup in prospect park lefferts garden area um what else i have a patreon account you'll see the link in my instagram i do recipes i put up to five recipes a month videos exclusives i do um, private cooking classes so if you're interested in that i do personal sessions i cook all types of food not just puerto rican food um but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty reachable. I am going to try and take a little break ski from social media just because I feel like I am so attached to my phone and I hate it. It's such an annoying little tick, you know, and I, I just want to get off of it. So, but I am reachable. So message me there. Don't send me nothing crazy because I'll annoy you. But, <laughs> and, uh, but you can totally message me there. We'll, and we'll, we'll include that in the, uh, the recipe that we sent out to everybody. We'll make sure they include your information as well. Perfect. So everyone has it through the email and all that. Perfect. So thank you. For, oh, it's just right at seven. Look at us. There you go. Professional. Right? Super professional. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, Santana. Um, I appreciate everything you do. You know, definitely, you know, making sure that the culture of Puerto Rico is definitely represented in a proper way. I've told you this a million times. Um, so I appreciate you. Appreciate you, everything you do. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. Um, on behalf of El Museo de Barrio, make sure you stay tuned to the other events we have coming up. You can reach us at mmusel.org for more information. Santana, I'll let you finish off if you have any any closing remarks. No, that's it. Thank you, guys. This is cute. I, I, I you know, we make it work even in pandemic. Um, so thank you for joining us and thank you for having me, El Museo. I really appreciate it.